Guys, welcome to Dennis and Yachting. We find ourselves today on the 47 Swift Trawler by Benito. My name is Rick Young. I'm the National Sales Director for Denison. And that seems rather appropriate that we're on this boat because this is a Swift Trawler that's appropriate all around the country, all the way from our offices in Seattle and all the way down to our offices in Miami. A trawler's a boat that does eight knots and does a thousand miles on the fuel capacity. This boat will do that. 520 gallons just does about 970 with some extra fuel left over. The ironic part of this Swift Trawler is the Swift part, because this 47 Swift Trawler will do a Swift speed of 29 miles an hour. One of the great things about the Swift Trawler is it's not the very traditional Swift Trawler or the trawler look. When you look at the outside of this boat as it's going, you'll see this much sleeker, rounded corners, a much sexier looking boat. One of the features of the boat is it's asymmetrical. And what that means is that one side of the boat, on this boat, the starboard side, is a little bit wider and a lot deeper than the other side. It really makes it easy for you and your wife to tie up in any condition or to go forward and handle the anchor. Another thing before we step on board is to make sure you look at the flybridge and the upper bridge area in this boat. Notice it has a hard top. As far as trawlers goes, this hard top is a feature you very rarely see on a trawler. As we step on this boat, the first feature you notice is the swim platform that goes up and down. What's great about that is not only can you put your dinghy on and off quickly, but when you lower it down the water about six inches, it becomes a great personal beach area. On the swim platform, you also notice there's a swim ladder that comes down, as well as chocks for your dinghy. In addition, a wash down with hot and cold water. Next, let's take a look at the cockpit. On the starboard side here, you'll see there's a step up, giving you easy access to the dock. On the back of the transom, you'll also see a seating area. Forward on the port side, you'll notice this easy access ladder to the bridge that also will slide in and out, giving you more cockpit space at the back of the boat. In the cockpit, you'll notice there's a molded top that adds for sunshade in the heat of the day, but also has lighting at nighttime to add mood in the evening. Underfoot here in the cockpit is not only beautiful teak decking, but also two hatches to give you access to the generator and lazarette storage. As we transition into the salon, you'll notice there's three sliding doors that completely open up the boat, making the inside out and the outside in. In the salon, there's seating for five with a settee on both port and starboard. The starboard side settee conceals a fold-out hide-a-bed. On the port side are two cold storage drawers along with the Fusion stereo. Also, if you look to the right of the stereo, you'll notice there are USB ports, which are typical throughout the boat. Underfoot in the salon is a very wide opening hatch that gives you full access to your engines. On the underside of the door is a large, heavy-duty sound dampening material that still gives you a very quiet ride while in the boat. Under the hatches here are two QSB 6.7 Cummins diesel engines at 425 horsepower apiece. At 1250 RPMs, this boat will cruise along at 8.1 knots using 3.8 gallons per hour and give you a range just under 1,000 miles. Top end speed is over 27 knots at 42 gallons per hour with a range of 284 miles. Here in the L-shaped galley, you'll notice not only do you have a cooktop, but you've also got a Mealy microwave convection oven, along with two more cold storage drawers, and a lot of storage for your pots and pans and dry goods, especially on a long voyage. The Corian countertops here are very clean, easy to use as Corian always is, but this also has a lip on it. This lip serves to keep your pots and pans from sliding on and off the countertop. Facing the helm is the bolster for the helm, and it does swing forward, increasing your counter space for prep work to double the size. 
Port of the galley is the inside helm or the lower helm. Quite obvious are the two 12 inch Raymarine hybrid touch screens that show not only video but also will display all of your engine controls. Above them are a couple of analog gauges to give you a quick, easy view of what is going on. Just for the stainless steel wheel, you'll see the Raymarine autopilot on the left and the bow and stern thruster on the right hand side. Farther left from the autopilot are the Lenco trim tabs and all your gauges for windshield wipers, lights, and other navigation things. Farther to the left and just a little lower is a controller that lets you control all of the system gauges and functions on the boat right next to the Raymarine VHF radio. Just to the starboard side of the helm, you'll find a door that opens and let you out to the asymmetrical opening where it's deeper and wider and gives you easy access out to the lines and the anchor forward. Next, let's take a look at the three staterooms down the stairs just to the starboard side of the helm. Before we get to the bottom landing, you'll see to the right here, we have the washer and dryer. After a pair of staterooms with twin singles that actually have a filler cushion that make it almost a king size bed. On the starboard side is a full plus berth. Just forward of the port stateroom is the day head that includes a shower stall and sink area. As you walk into the master stateroom, notice the double sized door that leads you in to the queen plus size berth along with the windows, both port and starboard, giving you a view of the water. The master stateroom has a split head with a sinking head being on the starboard side and a full size shower on the port side. Above the master is the bow area, which gives you full seating and lounge area, along with access to your ground tackle. In addition to the windless anchor, there's also a dual pulpit, so you can add an additional anchor for extra protection during anchoring. The final space we'll take a look at today is up here on the bridge. If you look after the bridge, there's a nice wide area for lounging. It can also be used to store kayaks and paddle boards. As you move forward to the grilling station, you notice the sink and prep area, as well as a refrigerator and freezer below. Covering this area is a large hard top with a convertible insert in the middle that will open up and let the sun in or keep the sun out. As most people find themselves in the majority of the time up here on the bridge, notice a large L-shaped dinette seating. Notice that the dinette actually folds out and makes it into a larger table. Forward here, finally we reach the helm with a large captain seat along with full navigation like we saw down below, repeated up here for your navigational needs. You'll also notice from the helm you've got a great view all the way around and most captains find themselves up here for the sea breeze. From the flybridge you really get a great perspective of what the Swift Trawler has to offer. On behalf of myself, Rick Young, and the Denison Yachting Team, I want to thank you for spending time with us here on Beneteau's new 47 Swift Trawler. If you have any questions on this boat, the 47 Swift Trawler, or any other boats that we carry, please give me a call. I'll be happy to answer your questions as well as find you a broker that best fits your needs.